Welcome into Around the Felt. I am your host, Reagan J. Losher. Here with me today is Colin Patrick Tong, or should I say P3. How are we doing today, Colin? No, it's not happening. <laughs> Why? Why is that not happening? Anyway, guys, who welcome into the episode. Is, the fuck is P3? No, it's Duncan. Uh, who's P3? You You're P3. All right, guys, That's for stupid. those of you who don't I'm understand, uh, Colin's big brother, Zach, uh, has two friends named Pat and Pat, so we call him P1, P2. His middle name's Patrick also, so he is P3. Whether or not he thinks it's stupid or not, that is what is happening. Dude, Blake, what do you want to do? <laughs> we'll be like, hi, I'm Colin. <laughs> Alright guys, but anyway, welcome in. We got ourselves a very good episode coming up. We're going to be doing our third episode of this eight-part series. We're doing the NFC South today. So yeah, it's going to be a pretty interesting episode. I think this will be one where we have a lot more debate compared to the past couple ones, just because this division has a lot of unclarity in it, and we're really not sure who's going to win and who's going to come in last. So, but yeah, yeah, I agree. It should be a good division to talk about. A couple things before we get started. One, hopefully the audio sounds better because we realized the fucking mic wasn't picking up our thing the entire time, so should be better today. Two, just want to say we appreciate all the feedback and support so far. With that feedback has actually come... Two new segments, Reagan, and one we're going to kick off right away, where yeah. we're going to talk about the news around the league since the last pod. So, Reagan, you want to kick us off? Yeah, so there's been a lot of breaking news, and we think that's something that we should be filling you guys in on, because obviously there's news happening around the NFL all the time. Uh, for starters, I mean, we saw Ron Rivera come out and basically criticize his offensive coordinator, and in fact, his Super Bowl winning offensive coordinator and Eric Bieniemy. Um, I guess a lot of players have been kind of criticizing his coaching style, trying to say he's almost too hard of a coach, which is kind of weird to think that players would be taken back by the fact that a coach is too hard when he has Super Bowl winning Super Bowl wins. And Washington's culture has been probably one of the worst that we've seen. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, that's not abnormal for players to complain that maybe they're getting worked too hard. I mean, superstar players have done it, Pro Bowl players have done it, rookies have done it, but the fact that Rivera goes out and says to the media that that's yeah. happening, well, that was the strange part. Like, you don't do that. You don't kind of throw off the chemistry with your new offensive coordinator and the team. Yeah, I mean, if it was me and I was on the Washington Commanders, I wouldn't be complaining. I would do whatever the enemy asked of me. I mean, obviously, I'm not the most athletic guy, but I think I'd be able to. I would. I'd fit well in the system, and I'd do exactly what he said. Again, buddy. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, if the enemy was pushing me too hard, I'd take it as a compliment and do what he said, because obviously, this guy's won Super Bowls before. So I mean, Eric, if McLaurin's complaining, I'll come play wide receiver for you. <laughs> Another, yeah, I mean, everyone that's played under the enemy for Kansas City, even Tyree Kill is no longer there. They all only have good things to say about him. Um, yeah. They say he works you hard, but he's got your back more than any other coach they've had. So. Yeah. Just strange that Rivera, we've talked about in the last episode how Rivera's on the hot seat. Just a very weird thing to do before the season starts. With the yeah, ownership. no, definitely. Uh, next on the list, we actually talked in the last episode as well how it was hard to find a hole on the Eagles roster. It was, we had to nitpick a little bit. And one of them was their linebacker depth. And what do they do? Classic Eagles style. They sign some veterans to cheap deals. Miles Jack coming in, 95 career games, started 13 games last season, had 104 tackles for the Steelers. And they signed Zach Cunningham, who... His best days are clearly behind him. He only played 49% of snaps last year in six games for Tennessee, but still some veteran depth to help N'Kobe Dean. What do you think of that for that defense? I mean, I think it sucks for you as a Giants fan. I mean, I think, once again, these are big ads. Um, I mean, That's what they did last year when they yeah. signed Dom Kinsu. It worked out well from last yeah, year, and I think it's going to work out well again, man. Deals, yeah. I really do. I mean, we'll see what happens. And then also some other breaking news, or kind of breaking news. I mean, Kareem Hunt, who's been a pretty successful running back in this league, Aside from his off-the-field issues, um, he is currently looking at signing with either the Colts or the Saints, so we'll see. I mean, obviously Alvin Kamara suspended three games for his off-the-field issues with that fight in Vegas, so they needed to go out and address some depth, but we'll get into more of uh, the Saints running back group when we break down the Saints later on. What fit would you like better, New Orleans or Indianapolis? Um, I'd say probably Indianapolis, just because Indianapolis needs him more. I mean, right now the uncertainty with Jonathan Taylor and his contract, but also and his knee, Moss, Zach and Moss yeah, broke Zach Moss broke his arm versus Saints, who went out and drafted a, drafted a running back. They still have Kamara out for three games, and then they went out and paid Jamal Williams in the offseason. To me, it just doesn't make sense, and it's going to be a clusterfuck if they bring him in, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, I think he was there, probably going to sign. I think the Colts called him, like, right before he worked out there, Yeah, and apparently they offered him more money, so I'd imagine he'll probably sign with Indianapolis, but that leads right into our Jonathan Taylor news. Excuse from practice to deal with an ankle injury. Um, 
What do you think of that? You worried about the ankle? It's the same ankle that had problems um, last year. He missed a couple games. He came back. Then he was out. Then he came back. You can tell he wasn't himself. He got a surgery in January. I mean, I'm like you guys. Like We don't have any insider info, so we just hear what the media tells us. So Honestly, I'm not too worried right now because there's so many reports coming out about Jonathan Taylor. I don't know what to think, so at this point, I'm just going to assume he's going to play week one. <laughs> yeah, because I, I really so. don't know what to believe because we're hearing so many different things. It seems like every day there's a new report on Jonathan Taylor, so I guess just wait and see, honestly. I mean, if you're really doing fantasy drafts now, I guess that would make me hesitate a little bit, but I mean, if you're smart, you're waiting to draft till late August, early September, and hopefully by then there's more clarity with the Jonathan Taylor and whole Colts backfield situation. True. Now, Hard Knocks, first episode released last night. Loved Reagan's it. New York Jets. Loved it. Of course he loved it. Loved it. Amazing. Cinema. New. Oh, can't even speak right now, but I loved it. <laughs> Cinematography. I guess that's cinem- too big of a word. Cinematography. That's cinem- too big of a word. <laughs> Cinematography. <laughs> Cinematic. Oh, there we go. Cinematic masterpiece it was last night. I mean, it was amazing seeing Aaron Rodgers and the boys get hyped up for the season. I mean, as a Jet fan, not being biased, how do I not say we don't go 17 and 0 in the Super Bowl? I mean, after watching that. It was awesome seeing all the guys hype up Rodgers and seeing Sauce and Garrett Wilson battle one-on-one in practice. I mean, that to have cool. the rookie of the year really cool. on both sides battling against each other. I yeah, mean, I like that. Was, oh, I'm sure you did. I will say, my, as an unbiased Jets fan, like we all knew we'd see a lot of Rodgers. The coolest thing that I saw you said as an unbiased was, Jet fan? Did you just come out of the closet? Did you just come out of the closet? We got ourselves a new Jet fan. No, no, no. Hey, it's on tape. Colin Tong, Jet fan. I will say, um, Zach Wilson looks mature. He looks like he's accepted. Yo, Garrett, go put the graphic back on. Keep going, keep going. Oh, there we go. Anyway, our graphic it, popped up. It looks screen. like um, that he's accepted his new role, and he's eager to learn from Rodgers, and I think this is the best thing for his career. He obviously was picked very highly, did not play well, was the most inaccurate quarterback in football last year. I think this could help save his career. What do you think? I mean, yeah, at this point he needs all the help he can get. I mean, I'm going to be honest, they didn't exactly put him in the best light. They, last night they kind of just, like, I feel bad for him in a sense because they're just, like, making him out to be, like, this baby who, like, fell apart. And they were kind of, they were kind of shitting on him a little bit for the story. But overall I think it's going to benefit him being under Rodgers because they can't, they can't put him out there again after last year. He's got to sit. Yeah, he's got to sit. So, right. um... I know you wanted to talk about the Johnny Manziel document. I actually haven't yeah. seen it yet, so I'm not going to comment on it. But I'm one of you guys. Let's hear. Let's hear how it was. Johnny now. Johnny Football Doc released yesterday. It's only about an hour and twelve minutes. Watched it today. Loved it. Pretty cool. It's just crazy to think that was like almost ten years ago, ten plus yeah. years ago. Uh, you, we were pretty young, so you kind of forget how big of a fall off he had. But if yeah. you watch it, you kind of understand like how much fame he had and kind of hit him like. A brick wall, but I highly recommend watching the Johnny Football doc. It was it was pretty cool to see. Yeah, no, I'm definitely gonna check that out when I get time. But that kind of wraps up the breaking news up to this point. Um, there hasn't been really much. I'm sure in the next couple episodes we'll have a lot more for you guys as the season progresses. But um, next up, we want to get into a segment uh, led by our new cameraman, Freddie Benson. I mean, jo- sorry, I mean Joe Cafaro. Joe, if you want to say- show your face on camera, say hello real quick. What's up? It's not really possible. Yeah. What's up, camera? That's uh Freddie over yeah. here. Okay. We got uh questions, correct? Uh yeah. So These are submitted uh, submitted by you guys. We appreciate every question. So questions from the fans. Question from the fans. So uh we, first one we got uh, a guy named Jacob Betoff. Um he's okay. asking Betoff, what a weird name. Yeah, so he thinks um Well he wants to know about the uh <laughs> The, the Falcons. So he goes, do you think Desmond Ritter can be the guy long-term in Atlanta? Do we think Desmond Ritter can be the guy long-term in <sighs> He thinks it, that he can be. Oh, okay. So okay. what do so we think about do we Desmond, think Ritter? Desmond Ritter? Can he be the long-term solution? And if you, ha- if I had to make a choice right now, I'd say no, he won't be the long-term solution. Like, I think he could be... I think his ceiling is just average, solid. And... I don't know, I don't think there's a ton of upside. Yeah, I know. Jake, fascinating question, and I'm glad you think that Desmond Ritter is going to really be the long-term solution for Atlanta. I personally don't think so. I do respect you asking this question, but I I honestly don't know what you're seeing here. We didn't really see much last year, and I don't think we're going to see much this year. But once again, Jake, great question. Jake, if you prove prove us wrong, respect, but until then, I don't think you know ball. Yeah, Jake, if if you're right on this, you can have a spot on the show. All right, so our second question is a two-parter, and it's from Hey Fledgen. Max, shout out Max, big fan of the show. 
He wants to know, um, with Wright and this remodeled Panthers team, how do you think Bryce Young's career will pan out? I actually love that question. Uh, Frank Reich has shown that he could be a winning coach with a quarterback carousel. We all know that from Indianapolis. He usually, I think what you'll see this year from the Panthers are start off slow. Frank Reich's teams never come out hot out of the gate. They might start out 1-2, and 0-3, oh something like that, but we'll get into the Panthers, but from week 8 onwards after their bye in week 7, they have the easiest schedule in the league, or second easiest schedule in the league. So I think you'll see the end of the season, Bryce Young start to come into his own because, yeah, he's small in stature and he's not the strongest arm, but he's smart, he moves around the pocket really well, and he's very accurate. I think Bryce Young is going to be a good quarterback. I don't know if his ceiling will be a top five quarterback just because he, he's lacking the athletic traits, but I think he can be a good quarterback in this league for a long time. Yeah, I mean, the only thing I got to add to that is we saw what Wright was able to do with Wentz early in his career. I mean, Wentz was an MVP-level quarterback early yeah, on. after so. not starting off very well his rookie year either, it's, and yeah. then he just took a huge dump. So I think Frank Wright has shown he can, he can help quarterbacks be successful. I think Bryce Jones is going to have a similar trajectory, except I don't think he falls off a cliff. Like, Great question, Max. Great question. That is a good question. That is a good question. And the uh, second part to his question, he wants to know a little bit about the Bucks. He wants to know if they will have a top five pick in next year's draft. Oh, that's a hell of a question because we yes. both, we both yes. have them towards the bottom of the yes. division. We'll get more into it later, but I think so. Yeah, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of it, but I think you could see them. I don't think they're a top three, but I think they could be anywhere from like four to eight. So I think they could, could certainly be a top five pick in the draft. Yeah. Some good responses. We'll see if that pans out. Is that it? Yeah, that's those are it. all the questions. Okay, well, that's going to lead us right into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Reagan. Yep, that's that a was great, a great pivot. Yep, and uh, guys, make sure to keep submitting questions. We're going to put out a form every time we're about to film an episode. Drop your questions. We'll try to answer as many as we can. Um, and yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Jacob Betoff and Max for asking us questions. Okay, we'll start with the key losses. Obviously, the goat, Tom Brady, gone. Yeah. Shaq Mason guard, gone to Houston. Fournette, they released. Mm -hmm. He was not very effective last year. Keem Hex, interior D-line. Rakeem Nunez, Rochez, Nacho, interior D-line, gone to the Giants. Cameron Brace, gone. They have uncertainty at tight end for the first time in a while. Sean Murphy, bunting, their starting nickel. He's gone to Tennessee. Donovan Smith, their left tackle last year, who was not very good, but now he's gone. So now Wurfs is kicking over to the left side. Keon O'Neal, safety, gone to Pittsburgh. Logan Ryan, safety, gone. A lot of losses, and of the losses. reason for all those losses, as we'll talk about, this team has an absurd amount of dead cap money. They couldn't afford to bring any of these guys back. They have $75 million in dead cap. Brady accounting for $35 million of that dead cap. Well, I mean, they already accomplished their mission. We yes. knew this was going to happen. It was Super Bowl. It was They had a small window to win a Super Bowl. They got the Super Bowl, and... <laughs> this is the aftermath. Absolutely. That's what they so. did. They backloaded contracts like Shaq Barrett's salary back when they won the Super Bowl was like under $5 million. Well, I, I'd like to, I'd like to find a Bucks, Bucks fan that's mad about this. I mean, no, I, you if there's any Bucks fan that's actually mad about this, like Anthony Gennetti, if you're out there complaining about this, I call you a fraud, sir. Because honestly, like, if, if my team went all in like this and won the Super Bowl, I don't give I don't give a crap. We could suck for the next five years. You got that Super Bowl, so... We, it's the Rams' similar approach. Yeah. Where it's going to come with like the Rams. The exact same, That's why they, they have a lot of holes in their team, not a lot of depth. The Bucks do not have a lot of depth. I am worried about this team. At least Byron Leftwich is gone. There was a quote at the end of last season. I know it looks bad to everybody, but I think we're the 12th best offense in the league. Ain't that <laughs> something? We still have a long way to go. Meanwhile, what he was talking about was they were 12th in total yards per game even though they were 25th in yards per play. They just ran a lot of plays and just threw a lot of short checkdowns. They were 22nd expect, expected points added per play. 25th in points scored per game. Who measures their offense about how many yards you get? It's about how many points you score. So luckily he's gone because he was an awful play caller. They would just run the ball up the middle with Rashad White or Leonard Fournette, and every first down they'd get nothing, and then it's okay, let's drop back to pass with Brady, and let's just throw quick passes because their offensive line can't protect. So left which being gone is good. In three years with Brady, no team outscored their opponent more in the fourth quarter than the Bucks. They basically got to the fourth quarter and would be like, okay, we're losing. Let's let Tom Brady finally do his thing and yeah. start airing it out. And he's the GOAT, so they won a lot of games that way, but it's not a realistic way to do it. Their offensive line was 25th in pass block win rate last year, 31st in run block win rate. And what saved the offensive line from looking even worse than that was because Brady got the ball at the quickest in the league. 
and he was one of the best at avoiding sacks, which this year won't happen because Baker holds the ball more, even though I love my boy Baker. i got to tell my story. There's no there's no even, oh, I'll let you tell your story, but I'll tell your story first, and then I'll, I'll say what well, I was going to say. Some of you might know, some of you might not, but I love Baker Mayfield. I met him in Nashville, me and my college Wait, buddies. actually? Yeah, you knew this. Me and my buddies amazing. from school, we were at Kid Rocks in Nashville. Basically, long story short, I got a dance battle with Baker Mayfield, hit the gritty, took my shirt off. We went to VIP, we did a shot to kill. It was awesome. He's the man. But he's not a very good quarterback, and he holds the ball very long. He takes a lot of sacks, and he doesn't get the ball out quickly. He's the opposite of Brady, and the only reason this offense wasn't worse than it was because of what Tom Brady did. Baker, if you want to come on the pod, your boy's right here. We'll give you a shot at Tequila back, and you can debate him on why you are a good quarterback. But no, in all reality, we don't even know if Baker's going to be the starting quarterback this year. I mean, there's a world where Kyle Trask is he the might starting be. quarterback. Baker starting the first preseason and, game, but it's yeah, open competition. And Kyle Trask starting at quarterback is essentially a rookie because I don't even think he he's has, a, I believe, nine, he's barely played. nine pass attempts yeah. in his career. So, so no matter what, it's either going to be a guy who's barely played any professional football or Baker Mayfield, who you've already covered. Is not good at getting the ball out quick, so it's going to be interesting. I think there's going to be a lot more sacks, and I honestly don't see all these guys checking it down. Like Tom Brady made Leonard Fournette like one of the ba- best pass catching backs out there, just by dumping him off the ball like yeah. ten times a game. Ton of checkdowns. He was but, great for PPR, but and I mean we're not the only ones that are down on the Bucks. I mean the fact that Vegas came out and set their line at six and a half wins kind of tells you something. I think we both have the under, correct? Yeah, I have them going four and thirteen. Sorry, Bucks fans. I think you guys are going to suck. But I have five and twelve. That might lead to Caleb Williams. You'll see. As of now, you guys are the worst team I've scattered out so far, but we'll see. That's interesting. If I'm the if I'm the Bucks, say like the Cardinals get the first pick next year, I'm doing what Carolina did, and I'm giving up a haul to move up to get Caleb Williams because you have a lot well, of backs. You May. don't have money like you're not I, big on Drake May. I am high on Drake May as well, but I think Caleb Williams is a different level type of prospect. I think Caleb Williams is better. I mean, depends on the price, of course, but yeah. Um, let's talk about their run game, which was. Very terrible. inefficient, yep. 31st in run block win rate a year ago. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Fournette's gone. Fournette was not good. He's still looking for a job. Honestly, I don't know if he'll get one until maybe some point in the season when hey, teams well, don't suffer worry. injuries. They went out and got Chase Edmonds, so I'm sure this, I'm sure this run attack will yeah. be even better. I mean, he, was, he was super efficient in all of his stops since Arizona. What is he on, his fifth team since he left the Cardinals? Probably. So, I mean, this guy's bounced around a ton. R- R- Rashad, Rakad, Rashad, Rashad White. Rashad White. I don't Rashad know. White. I'm not going to pronounce it. All I know is he puts results on the fantasy field when I had him. But um, yeah, I mean, he was very inefficient. I mean, he was decent as a pass catcher, but on the ground he wasn't efficient. And like you said, the line's only getting worse. I mean, I honestly wanted to debate you on this team, but there's not much to debate here outside of the fact of how bad they'll finish. Are they going to be the worst team or the second worst team? Yeah, uh, Rashad White, out of 44 backs with 100 more carries a year ago, was 38th in yards per carry, 33rd in expected points added per rush, 42nd in runs of 10-plus yards, and 43rd in yards after contact per carry, according to Sharp Football Analysis. He just wasn't good. Decently valuable in PPR formats because Brady would throw a ton of checkdowns. Is that going to be the same with... Baker slash Kyle Trask, I don't know. Is Chase Edmonds taking those third down touches? I don't know. Personally, fantasy-wise, I'm trying to stay away from this offense. I mean, if you took Evans or Godwin at the right point in the draft, I wouldn't be mad at it, but I don't love them. Um, I'm definitely not touching any of their tight ends. I'm not touching any of their quarterbacks. Personally, this is an offense I want to stay away from due to their offensive lines, uncertainties, and quarterback uncertainties. Yeah, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. I mean, their wide receivers are obviously still disgusting in Goblin and Evans. I mean, although I could see both of them getting shipped at the deadline if this team's really, truly t- trying to tank for uh, one of the quarterbacks, but we'll, we'll see what happens. But You want to talk some defense before we yeah. move on? Because this is a pretty bad yeah. team. Yeah, I mean, obviously they got Vita Bay leading that defense as well as Shaq Barrett. I mean, I do like their D-line just from those two alone. I mean, Vita Bay is, like, disgusting, especially in the run game. He's just... He's just huge. He's like Moke Jones just stuffing the run game. <laughs> but, you know, you know, no, you like but, you know, I mean, I only say that because they, they, they look alike. They're both big Samoan guys. But, um, but you know, he's, he, he had six and a half sacks last year and 13 quarterback hits. And for a guy that size to do that, I mean, it's pretty impressive. He's definitely one of the best D tackles in the league. Yeah, he's very he, um, He's one of their premier players for sure. They were 24th in pressure rate and 20th in total pressures a year ago. Granted, Shaq Barrett was hurt for a lot of the year, 
He only played eight games, 35% of snaps. He had six quarterback hits, which, <laughs> a crazy stat, that was only 0.9% of his pass rushes, which was awful. That's a terrible percentage. But six quarterback hits was still the fourth best on the team. And the guy with the most quarterback hits on the team was Devin White, their Will linebacker, who rushed the passer on 22% of pass snaps, and he had 16 quarterback hits. So this front was not necessarily very good last year. Joe Tryon Shoyanka, he's going in, I believe, his third year out of Washington. He has not shown he can be a consistent pass rusher. He looks pretty much like a bust. He's below average. Anthony Nelson, who stepped in for Shaq Barry last year, he was 10th in ESPN's run-stop win rate. But that's run-stop win rate. That's not pass rushing. Yeah. They, they couldn't get after the quarterback. And that's probably half the reason why Devin White had the rush at, or, uh, blitz at such a high percentage. Yes, 100%. Although I love Devin White. I mean, he's he, getting into it. He's my MVP of this team because I you think... You got White. I got, I got the other linebacker. I got David. I think without what? David, White wouldn't, wouldn't be as good. I think, I think, without, David I think without White, David wouldn't be as well, good. David did it before White. Cool. And then White came in and showed David how to be a pro linebacker. <laughs> I mean, let's... <laughs> Let's be honest, there's a reason why Devin White almost won MVP in that Super Bowl they won. They, Levante David didn't almost win. Yeah, I mean, but Devin that was, White. That was three years ago, though. Okay. Devin White has since declined to a sense. I mean, he even requested a trade out of there. They Man, that was a contract. He said that was because he contract, said it was so. Yeah, but why do you think they don't want I mean, they can't afford him, but. Yeah. I mean, you're already paying Levante David. Levante David was better last year. He was 16th in the league in tackles that created a positive play for the defense. He makes things easier for. Devin White, because Devin White can that play more free Devin and White's, rush the passer. I'd say Devin White get the defense or the offense is more worried about Devin White, which allows Levante David to make the tackles that he can get. I think they're more focused on Devin White, which opens up more for Levante David. Agree to disagree, brother. I think Levante. I disagree David's with better. you, and I agree with myself. He's been doing it before Devin White. All right, like what do we think? It. Peanut Gallery. What do we think? Devin White or Levante I David? I think Devin White's pretty good. I yep. Like him. I'll take Devin White. But Devin he White's been declining ever since the Super Bowl year. What do you think? He has been declining. You think Devin White? All right, unanimous for Devin White. Next topic. <laughs> I think he's just at a younger age, more athletic. Yes, yeah, I mean, right now I'd yeah, rather Devin White. He's more athletic. He's younger. Defense. If you ask, I think if you ask every offensive coordinator. Well, you know what I do? Right? After this, we're gonna put a poll up. What linebacker would you rather have for this year? Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, you're not gonna win that, yeah. then, dude. I, Levante David was better last year. Okay. We'll throw that Twitter poll up. Yeah, we'll throw it up. Uh, let's talk secondary. Somehow they were able to bring back Jamel Dean. Throw it up right now on the social. Somehow they were able to bring up, bring back Jamel Dean. He was 14th in yards allowed per cover snap last year. He was good. No one thought they were able to afford him and bring him back. They did, which is, I guess, a good sign. But it's weird because they're kind of stuck in a state where they're still trying to compete now by bringing back vets on this defense, but they don't have the offense of talent or the quarterback to get it done. So. Weird spot. Carlton Davis was not good last year. He was actually terrible. He was 73rd in yards allowed per covered snap. They lost Sean Murphy Bunting to play the slot, bringing in Ryan Neal from Seattle. Maybe Antoine Winfield plays more of the slot or the deep safety. I don't know. Either way, I think this is a, like a good defense, but the offense is going to hold this team back. You'll see a lot of 20 to 17 or 14 to 10 games out of this team this year, and we both have them at the bottom of the division. Yeah. And honestly, the defense might start to decline, too. I mean, when your offense can't put up points and the defense is consistently out on the field, I mean, it can make any defense go from elite to bad like that just from being on the field all game. 100%. And they're, they're getting up there in age as well, so there could be some decline. And like you said, regard. I mean, the, the Bucks were one of the highest in plays run. I mean, this year they're not going to be – they're going to be a lot of three and outs. So, yeah. you know, Tom Brady kind of managing that offense, running a lot of – running three plays to get a first down, you know. Uh, let's talk about their draft class real quick. Really not much. Kalaja Kansi, they took 18th overall. He's very undersized. That was well documented. He's like six foot and a half, six one. But he was very productive at Pitt. A lot of people tried to draw in comparisons to Aaron Donald just because they both played at Pitt and both were kind of undersized. He's no Aaron Donald, but he did lead Power 5 interior defensive lineman with a 14% pressure rate from the inside, so he has a motor. I think he's going to make a difference in that interior next to Vita Bay. I think that was a good pick. And they drafted Cody Mock. Uh, oh, if you don't know what he awesome. looks like, look, look him up. He's got long ginger hair, ginger beard, big gap between his teeth. Like, he's an absolute unit. He played tackle at North Dakota State. Well, he, he started out at tight NFL. end. He started yes, out at tight end. he did end. start out at tight he end. He put on 85 on. pounds in his time yeah. at there. I That's mean, the <laughs> fact that he went from like... Man, that guy looks like a pig. Yeah, he went from 215 to freaking 300 just like that. I honestly, and he was he was drinking. You know, we were talking about the smoothie he was drinking. It was absolutely disgusting. Let me see if I could get it up here. 
Yeah. Um, He's a mauler in the run game. We'll see how his pass pro holds up, shifting the interior in the I NFL. But he should he should help the run game if he develops. He this is a very young tough. offensive line. Yeah, yeah. Uh, with Tristan Wirfs switching from right tackle to left tackle, that's why I have Tristan Wirfs as my MVP and my X Factor rig. And I think if he makes the conversion over the left and he stays healthy and he plays it really well, like he has it right in his career. I think he gives this offense more upside, but if he struggles to make that transition, he's not as dominant as he was at right tackle, I think Baker's going to get sacked, slash Trask is going to get sacked even more, and this offense is going to struggle even more. Yeah, I mean, obviously Wirfs is one of the best. I wish the Chats got him over Beckton, but yeah, I mean, definitely losing a guy like Donovan Smith, even though he wasn't that effective last year. He's been a staple of that line for the longest time, so the fact that they're moving Wirfs over to the other side is going to be a a big impact, and if he's able to adjust, he could definitely be the X factor. And I, I mean, like I said, I think Devin White's the MVP, and I'd say probably the X factor is who's ever playing quarterback. Because I think if they can actually get good quarterback play to Baker Mayfield and kind of show some flashes of his times with the Rams last year and early on in Cleveland, this team could maybe be an eight-win team, maybe pushing for the division just because the it. division is that weak. But I don't see it. We'll see. I mean, I don't think there's much more to discuss here unless you want to go back and forth about Levante, David, and Devin White. But uh, <laughs> uh, I'm ready to get into the Panthers. Yeah, uh, I think let, we can move on here. And the Panthers, um, obviously, were busy this offseason. They uh, went out and got a new coach in Frank Wright. They went out and drafted Bryce Young first overall. I mean, they showed flashes last year. Um, what they finished last year? Hold on. Uh, they were seven and ten last seven year. Seven and ten. So with a revolving door quarterback, and they had Matt Rule until week five, and I believe they fired him. Yeah, and that, that was the impressive part: the fact that they uh, had to have a midseason firing and were still in it to the last game of the season. I mean, if they beat, uh, if they won one more game, they would have been in the playoffs because they did have the head-to-head versus the Bucks. So. Yeah. I mean, this is a team that almost was in the playoffs last year who went out, and I'd say probably got an upgrade. I mean, Bryce Young maybe right away isn't better than Sam Darnold, but I'd imagine by midway through the season, he's going to be better than what Sam Darnold was for them. Obviously, Absolutely. Losing. Or you mean Sam Darnold, Baker Mayfield, or P.J. Walker? I mean, pick it. Yeah, geez. He'll be better than all of them, 100%. Yeah. And obviously losing D.J. Moore hurts. Tough, um, tough loss. They lost McCaffrey midseason. That's another tough loss. And then losing Foreman, who filled in for McCaffrey. Foreman's very underrated. He's a power back, but everywhere he goes, I mean, he, he plays pretty yeah. well. So I mean, we'll, we'll see. Miles Sanders stepping up. Miles Sanders should have a higher ceiling than Foreman, but... Yeah. Foreman was productive last year. And that does tell you something, the fact that they went out and paid a running back, you know? Yeah. I mean, granted, Miles Sanders is still pretty young. I think he's only 25 because he was one of those guys that got drafted in the second round, I believe, so they, the Eagles couldn't pick up his fifth-year option. I don't think they would have anyway, but... Yeah, um, they wouldn't have either. So, but still, that that being said, he's still pretty young, and I think he's got a lot in the tank because, honestly, for, for a four-year span, he really didn't get a lot of touches with Philadelphia. They kind of didn't use him as a bell They used the committee. Last yeah. year was his best season with Philadelphia. He got his most touches. And still, and still he wasn't even like close to a bell cow. Yeah, so they split it up. If you don't mind, Reagan, I'd like to shit on that rule for a minute. Oh, yeah. Um, Look right God, at the camera. Look thank, right at the camera. Thank God he's back to college because that's where he belongs. The team went 11-27 with him as the head coach. He had a quote saying, My job is not to pick the starting quarterback. It's the guy's play. That's terrible. In total, they traded a second, a third, two fourths, a fifth, and a sixth to assemble a quarterback room of Darnold, Baker, Mayfield, and Matt Corral. That is pathetic. His record against the spread was dead last in the league while he was there, so he's not meeting any type of expectations. He passed on quarterbacks several times in the draft. In three years, had three picks in the top 10, six in the top 40. They could have taken multiple quarterbacks. They could have done what they did this year and moved up to one to take a stud quarterback or even a two. Uh, the guy just punted the quarterback position and thought his what he did in college was just translate over to the league with grown-ass men. Clearly that's not the case. The Panthers didn't even let him get a full season. They kicked him out. Luckily they did. I think Frank Reich is going to help stabilize his team. He's shown he could be a playoff caliber head coach, even with a carousel at quarterback. And I think Bryce Young is going to be good in this offense. Well, I don't, I don't really understand the whole Matt Cor- them drafting Matt Corral and never even giving him a chance. I know he got injured early on, but still, I mean, the, why, why even draft a guy if you're never going to let him see the field? I agree. I mean, you gotta, if you're going to take a young guy, I mean, I mean, not to go back on the terrible Buccaneers, but last year they had a chance to give Trask reps when they rested Brady in Week 18, the starters, because they already clinched the playoff spot, and they didn't even play Trask. He got nine snaps, that's nine passing attempts. Why don't you play Trask and see what you have for a game? I mean, yeah, you kind of didn't even do Brady that. That's why I'm not. I don't think Trask wins the job there. Here, I think Matt Corral will never have an opportunity in 
no. Carolina, obviously. I mean, yeah, and they went out and got Andy Dalton, so it's, it's not even like he's the backup. Yeah, he's not. Dalton's going to be the backup. Dalton's almost like a like a coach. He's almost like an assistant coach to like yeah. helping mentor Bryce Young. Because he knew yeah. coming in, they have the first pick. He's not going to be the starting quarterback. Well, and I think that also, I do like that side. That also bodes well for the Panthers because if Bryce Young is to miss time or he starts out struggling, they're like, we got to sit him down and let Andy Dalton play a few games. They can. They can, yeah. So I, that's one, another reason why I'm kind of higher on the Panthers right now. Dalton wasn't great, but like... You could yeah, for, he's still for like his last year, but like you could have had. He worse. still could be the there co- was worse in the league. He still lets you compete, though. Yeah, you can I still mean, compete with Dalton. I mean, he's not going to light the scoreboard up, but he's smart. He knows what he's doing. So can this team? They have. I mean, I think I personally think they have a good chance to be a, either win the division or be the wild card. They have the fourth easiest schedule in football and the third largest improvement from a season ago. So their schedule is so much easier than last year, and they went they won seven games last year with a carousel of quarterback. Now they have the fourth easiest, and they have Bryce Young, who is the only quarterback in Alabama history to have back-to-back 3,000-yard passing seasons. He is elite outside the pocket with a 14.9% touchdown rate, 7.7 yards per pass attempt. Go watch his highlight tapes. He gets outside the pocket. He maneuvers the pocket really well, and he makes just deadly accurate throws. Yeah, he lacks the arm strength, but in the pocket on throws over the middle of the field, he has 72% completion rate with 10.5 yards per attempt. So he shows that he's elite in the middle of the field, he can go outside the numbers. We'll see about the deep ball, but I have this team at nine and eight just because I think if they won seven games last year with that carousel of quarterback, they only upgraded that position. They only upgraded their coaching staff. I like them at nine wins. What do you got? Uh, I also had nine wins. <laughs> the over under is seven and a half, so we both got the over. Yeah, I mean, this is I guess the first two teams we agreed on a lot, and then the next two when we get into those, there's going to be a lot more disagreement. But um, yeah, I don't go in nine and eight. One of the biggest reasons is the fact that they were able to win seven games last year with kind of the inconsistency at quarterback, the instant inconsistency at the coaching position, and then the fact that they have the fourth easiest schedule. Um, I think the fact that they got Andy Dalton there for Bryce Young will be huge. I mean, they went out and got some wide receivers in the off season. I mean. Adam Thielen's kind of washed at this point, but still, he's a pro who knows how to play. He can he can kind of be there for the young guys. Um, they who else did they get? Um, DJ Chark and DJ they drafted Chark, yep. Jonathan Mingo in the second round out of Ole Miss, who was perfect for Young because Young's going to play more of that underneath middle of the field kind of game, and he's deadly accurate with it. And Mingo, after the catch, is like a running back with the ball in his hands. He's very physical. Kind of reminds me of AJ Brown a little bit. I think he's a perfect compliment. To yeah. Bryce Young. So if there's any quarter, uh, wide receiver I'm targeting fantasy-wise on this team, it is Mingo. I, I'm not yeah. touching Thielen or Chark. Well, and like what Joe just said, um, they got Hayden Hurst as well. They and, do have Hurst. He's a solid veteran. I mean, hey, he kind of showed he's still got something in the tank. Obviously, his career started out pretty slow out of South Carolina coming in to play for the Ravens. They spent a first-round pick on him to not really use him, but he ended up kind of having a pretty good year for Cincinnati last year, showing he's, he's still a pro and can, can do some stuff for an offense. So... We'll see how he does here, and I think he's going to have a bigger role for the Panthers than he did for the Bengals last year. I mean, he could potentially be their number one option this year, if we're being honest. I mean, there's not one Good. guy on this I mean, team that screams it. like they're the guaranteed number one target. Thielen's saying he feels like he's 24 years old again. We'll, we'll see about that because he – I don't even really think he was in the league when he was 24. I mean, maybe, maybe not. Maybe I don't think probably. he was in the league when he was 24. I'm not even <laughs> – I'm pretty sure he came in at like 26 that? or 27. He was – you know he was you're super old. You're definitely wrong. No, dude, I he know. He didn't for, come in the league at 26. Yes, he did, bro. I'm telling you, Adam Thielen hasn't been in the league for long at all. He came in very late. Um, I'm telling you, bro. I'm telling you. And when, I, when I'm right, all right, Joe, look, figure that out for us. But um, anyway, uh, yeah. So even with Adam Thielen saying he was pl- feels like he was when he was 24 back in college or wherever he was, because I know he started out with the Vikings super late, and I can promise you that. Um, I, I think this team has some decent weapons, but uh, I'm more so I'm higher on their defense and the fact that they have one of the better offensive lines. I mean, they took Iki Aquanu last year in the first round, and he had a, he had a pretty good rookie season, I'd say. He was good. He so, had a he allowed a 4.9 percent pressure rate, which was third best amongst rookie left tackles the past three seasons. So that includes guys like Andrew Thomas, who started off slow, Christian Darrisaw, Jedrick Wills, Mackay Beck, like a lot of you know highly picked tackles he, he played well and he was more known for his run blocking more so than his pass protection so the fact that he held his own as a pass protector as a rookie is a great sign for Carolina took him sixth overall at NC State last year um, their run blocking was good last year as a whole but 
is Sanders going to be that guy? We don't know if he really did what he did last year because of him or because he was behind the best offensive line in football. I will say he generated the league's highest rate of runs. I got five plus more yards when contacted at or behind the line of scrimmage, which is an interesting stat because it means even when he got hit behind the line, he was able to break off yeah, tacklers. I, mean, so. I don't know. I'd say it's more on that offensive line. Yeah, I, I, I think Sanders is an average back. I don't I'd think he's special. Line. I'd say it was more on the offensive line. But, but he is going to another good O-line, so hey, who knows? He could have a good season. I wouldn't be surprised. I think he's going to get the most volume he's ever had um, due to the fact that <laughs> they didn't really go out and get anyone else. They didn't draft anybody. I mean... Who I who's there? He's got to compete with Chuba Hubbard. I mean, it's not exactly Hubbard's like terrible. He's awful. He's awful. I, he never, wasn't awful, but no, I mean, he's terrible. He's but a, I mean, he's had his opportunity. Every to year be the he's been back. in the league, he's like bottom five in yards per carry and yeah. yards after contact. Like every legitimate stat that measures a running back's success, he's like bottom five to ten in every one since he joined the league. He's trash. Adam Thielen was twenty two when he joined the NFL. Okay, twenty two. He was oh twenty two. Reagan gosh. thought he was twenty seven. So how many years was he he's on the 32. Vikings? I hope you guys got a laugh out of that. He thought he was twenty seven. Seven years old when he came to the league. <laughs> Did he? Well, twenty three. My bad. Sorry. Oh, twenty three. So it's still way. You're like he wasn't even the league at twenty four. <laughs> That's awful, bro. What? That's pathetic. Dude. Oh, okay. He didn't. Yeah, but he didn't. He didn't make it to the NFL till twenty fourteen. All right. So uh, <laughs> brother, what? He's been on the Vikings. Still two years off, oh, I see what I'm thinking here. Oh, he didn't break out. Okay, my bad. Yeah, he didn't break out till he was 27. Oh, okay. wow. Yes. Yeah, okay. okay. That All makes right. it better. I will say about this team, expect them to struggle out of the gate. Like I said oh. earlier, they have a bye in week seven. After the bye, they play the second easiest schedule in the league from that point onward. So if this team starts out like two and five, three and four, and you, you want to start Shitting on us for picking the over seven and a half. Just wait; they'll they'll heat up over the down the stretch. Bryce Young will get more comfortable in this offense. They'll be better. Yeah, no, I th- I think they'll be good too. Like we said, we both taking the over here. I'm sure Matt Scherf will be applauding down in uh, Charlotte right now, going nuts at the games. But uh, yeah, we're we're big on them this year, and we'll see what happens. I think they'll be competing for a play for either a wild card or the division. But uh, yeah, let's get to the defensive side of the ball because this is this is what excites me more about this team. Yeah, they're definitely better defensively. That's for sure. I mean, Brian Burns, the leader of this defense, twelve and a half sacks last year. I mean, that's crazy with ten for, ten tackles for a loss on top of that. I mean, he's he's a beast on the edge. He's elite. He's elite. Uh, it helps having Derek Brown on the inside with with forty quarterback pressures you got here. I yeah, mean, that's but crazy. he had one sack. Like, can he turn more of those into sacks because he's clearly disrupting disrupting on the interior. Maybe he's getting double teamed a lot. He's yeah. pushing the pocket. Can he finish those plays and get more sacks? I mean, I think he can become a Pro Bowl type player, potentially all pro type player if he gets that. And I mean done. obviously it hurts he's that very they, good at Auburn. And it hurts that they lose Matt Ionitis, but I mean they got Shy Tuttle, so and he's think, better against the run. Yep. Certainly better against the run. I mean and then they got uh I mean, they they got Shaq Tom, Thompson. I mean, he's kind of he's an interesting player. He's one of those kind of chess pieces. Justin uh, Houston as well. He's all right. Oh, I didn't even realize they got Justin Houston. Well, I mean, you took Gross Matos. They took him 38th overall in 2020 out of Penn State. At the time, was a great value pick. He was projected to go probably early to mid 20s in the draft. He's been terrible. Yeah, and then uh, obviously. two and a half sacks and ten quarterback hits in a full season. You don't expect that from a guy that you picked highly and was projected to be a better prospect than even where he was picked. Yeah. So he almost seems like he's washed. I will say, J.C. Horn, hell of a pick. It was him and him or Pat Sertan. People were arguing, who do you take? Pat Sertan has had a better career to this point, but J.C. Horn, yeah, but J.C. Horn is no slouch either. He was fifth in yards allowed per covered snap a year ago. If he's healthy, he could be elite. He missed 18 of his first 34 games in over 400 snaps in coverage last season. He only allowed eight catches that were 10 or more yards downfield in 400 coverage wow. snaps. The guy, I mean, he's locked down. If he could stay healthy, I mean, he could get to that certain level. There turns out they both can end up being elite players. And that was very interesting because I actually liked Horn before. I was wrong, Sertan. But it's not like Horn was a bust. I mean, you're, you're, not, you're not. He's good. good. Still a long They're both time good. left in the career. CJ Henderson, go Gators, was a great Gator. Didn't pan out in the league. Jaguars took him, I believe, ninth overall in 2020. Yeah, ninth. Uh, they traded him last year for basically a bag of chips. And he still wasn't good last year for Carolina. Um, 
I do like Jeremy Chen. I do like. I mean, Bond he's my X factor. And they brought in. Defense. They brought Jeremy Chen plays Jeremy very Will well in the my box. X factor. He's a stud in the box. Oh, he's so good. He's good at blitzing too. I yes. mean, did you see? Uh, what, what, I think he had last year. He had two touchdowns defensively in the same exact game, and both were fumble recoveries. I mean, yeah. the guy's got a nose for the football, whether it's getting picks or getting fumble recovery, strip sacks. I mean, he uh, he's my X factor on that defense because I think I, as Brian Burns obviously is like more the MVP of the defense with the sacks. Jeremy Chen's the X factor because he has a nose for the ball. I like that. I like that. Um, I do like Von Bell coming over to kind of play the deep safety role. I think he adds a veteran presence to a young defense, and he can help them all grow. Um, I think that's good. I imagine I, just because you talked about X factors, I actually have Frank Reich as my X factor. I think interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I think if he can help develop Bryce Young to the point where at the end of the season he looks like a true number one overall pick because. He lacks those elite traits that other number one overall picks had. Maybe his ceiling isn't as good. But he can, if he can get his mind right to the point where he can read the defense, he can call the offense, so, he can make checks at the line. If they work together and he grooms Bryce Young, I think this offense can so actually be pretty good. So your X factor is not really – it's more so Bryce Young. It's Frank Reich and how, how quickly he can bring him along. I believe yeah. it's his coaching. It's yeah. his coaching. That's why I took Frank Reich. It's interesting. I know you could say Bryce Young. I mean, it's, it's kind of their, their tandem. Yeah. How, how quickly can he get him going? My MVP is Brian Burns. He's just I think he's the best player on the team. He's an elite edge yeah. rusher out of Florida State a few years ago. Um, very good. He's a beast. Who do you guys your MVP? I said him, too. You had him, too? Yeah. Okay. No, I said Burns, and then uh, my X Factor was Chin. I like that. I, I just think offensively they're not going to enough, to be able to do enough to have an MVP. So Yeah, I don't hate that. My MVP is the 12th man, Matt Cherf. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's really it for this. I, I'd say we, uh, we're going to take a small break, go to this quick reading, and we will be back with the Falcons and the Saints. What's up, everyone? It's Colin from Around the Felt here. Check us out wherever you get your podcasts, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, or TikTok. Continue to send in questions, trivia questions, debate topics. Now let's get back to the episode so I can shit on Reagan for trading me Bijan and Dynasty. All right, guys, welcome back in. That was quite the ad read from Colin. Yeah, that's interesting about Bijan. I mean, we'll get right into the Falcons and if you got all this talk to talk. I'm I, sure got you got a lot. I got a lot of facts to oh, back do you? up. Oh, do you got a lot of facts? Yeah. Well, there's two ways to look at it, but we'll get there. First, I understand we are on different sides of the ball here on the Falcons. I have them at 9 and 8. You have 6 and 11. I think right? they're going to suck. Why? Tell me why. Well, a lot of reasons. First off, I do not believe in Desmond Ritter at all. I'm sorry, Jacob Betoff. I know you came in before saying you did believe in him. I personally have zero faith in him. I have no faith in Arthur Smith, and I have no faith in this team. I mean, the amount of skilled guys they keep taking year after year. I mean, the fact that they wasted that pick on Bijan, yeah, I know he could be a generational game changer, but you have bigger holes than that. It's not like Tyler Algier was, like, that bad last year. I'd say he was pretty good for the most part. So the fact that they went out and took Bijan when they had so many holes on this team is a reason right then and there. Yeah, so that's the... What I love about Bijan in the system is how good he's going to be, but from a team building perspective, it was not a good pick to make. No, not I'm at all. You, I'm going to tell you why I like the Falcons. They only lost two games last year by more than one score, which was on par with the Chiefs and Bills. For they were the only teams that lost less games by more than one score. So they're competitive in every game, and that's you mentioned the system that Arthur Smith runs. It's very run first, time of possession. It's, there's a variable to that, but it keeps them in games. So they're not getting blown out. They have the second easiest strength of schedule this year. Last year they won seven games with $84 million in dead cap with Matt Ryan taking up a ton of it, Julio Jones. So those are all off the books. So they would actually bring in some talent on the defensive side of the ball, which we'll get into. Um, but I'd like to talk about why my boy Bijan is going to go off this season in this offense. So I'll talk about the fantasy aspect first and then talk about why it wasn't good for a team-building perspective. Algier last year was good. 1,000 yards as a rookie, picked in the fifth round. That's impressive. The Falcons had the number one run rate on first down last year. So teams were like, okay, their quarterback is Mariota, and then towards the end of the year, Desmond Ritter. So we're going to load the box up. We know you're running the ball. Didn't matter. They were still a top-five rush offense in the league. Algier had five-plus carries on 41% of his carry. I mean, five-plus yards on 41% of his carries. Which was fourth in the league. Well, that's my problem, dude. That is my problem right yes, there. Yes. So why, do you, why did they go out and draft Well, Bijan? we're talking fantasy why? right now. This is why, why I won the trade. Dude. This is why I won the trade. So why did you win the trade? trade? Dude, did you not just see the depth chart come out? 
Who, what, let me guess, Bijan must be the starter, right? Nah, Cordell Patterson, who's number two? <laughs> Algier. Okay, Reagan, let's just get super freaked out over a depth chart at the beginning of August. That's why I made overall, he's starting. I knew, Jesus dude. Christ. Dude, don't take uh, the but the where game, Algier lacked was, he was not explosive. He was 24th in the league in a rate of getting 10 plus yards. But he was second in expected points added per attempt. 3.6 yards after contact, rank fifth. Ninth in success rate amongst all rookie running backs since 2000. That's crazy. That's a crazy so stat. what I'm hearing is he's going to probably... Bijan's not going to get all the pie. That's what I'm hearing. And the offensive line was good. Running so they're going to have a good 50-50 timeshare. Uh, that's what no, I'm hearing. That's not what's happening. Running backs gained three-plus yards before contact at the league's third-highest rate. And they gained five-plus yards on a league-best 42% of carries. So... From a fantasy perspective, you take the best running back prospects in Saquon Barkley and plug him into this offense. Wow, he's going to be absolutely dominant. He might be, actually might not be. He will definitely be a top five fantasy running back this year. I guarantee it. And, so, you tra and I gave you 30-year-old Devontae Adams in pick seven this year in the rookie draft for B. John Robinson in the first next year. Whoa, whoa, I'm whoa, sorry, whoa, whoa, you going to admit it? Are you going to admit it? I won't admit it. Are you going to admit it? I want it because you admitted it last night we're watching hard knocks. You want to admit it right now? You're making up thinking. stories now. Now you're making up stories. I was a little buzzed. Am I going to eat off Okay, Applebee's. okay. <laughs> Look, all right. I'm looking you guys straight in the camera right now. Am I going to admit that a trade we made for a player who hasn't played a snap in the league, I lost for a guy who's been a beast of a wide receiver? I will not admit anything because so much stuff happens in the NFL. Is B. John Robinson guaranteed to be, guaranteed to be a stud running back? Is he? Dude, the, way you're talking, that we have dude, the way you're talking, he's already in the Hall of Fame, bro. He's the way you're talking, he's all... Why is he, what makes you think he's going to be a stud? Be a stud. Oh. Because the offensive system he's in, he's the most elite oh, prospect what, what? in the past and a running And a run-first offense, when clearly running the ball works out super well and is going to translate to a playoff berth, all the best teams in the league... I'm not talking right playoff berth! I'm talking fantasy right there! That's well, why well, I'm first talking off, fantasy. Buddy, Buddy, That's first off, you were saying they were going to win nine games in probably I have them nine division. games because they have the second easiest strength of schedule. Doesn't well. matter to seven me, bro. Games last Does year. not matter and to me. And Andy's on that offense. Kyle Pitts is back. Ritter can't Kyle be Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts is back. What the hell has he done in the league? Kyle Pitts was the first tight end as a rookie since Mike Ditka to have a thousand yards. And Kyle Pitts is so overrated, bro. I'm sorry. Oh God. He was Same hurt with last Jake year. One, that's the this problem. team's going to be a bunch. Okay. This team's going to suck. Well, that's, that's the you, know what, you know what? Oh I am God, promising bro. you they'll win under eight and a half games, which their line is up. I am promising you that. Well, you I don't know what I'll do. You want to make the bet? Take oh, oh, and a half, but oh, so you're chicken they're shit. They're closer to nine okay. than they are six. Okay. They're closer to nine than they are Oh, I didn't know you were chicken shit. Come on. I thought your boy B. Mr. 1500, Mr. Best Running Back since Saquon Barkley, is going to lead him to the promised land. So you ain't too confident then, buddy. I was talking fantasy there. I didn't know you were Bagakar. Ritter, um, well, <laughs> Ritter, can come on, Bagakar, make the bet. Ritter cannot be much worse than. Come on, Bagakar, make the bet. What's the bet? What's I don't know. Bet? Over, over, under eight and a half wins. You have him out for nine. I have him out for six. Come on, don't be chicken. Okay, I'll do the bet. Okay, I'm not shaking. Here's the bet. Here's the terms. Shake my hand, and I'll tell you the terms. No, <laughs> what kind of bet is that? <laughs> All right. Terrible. So as we were talking about before with the Buccaneers lineman um, Ben. Wait, not Ben Barch. Wait. Yeah, Ben Barch. Oh, Ben. He was a different player. Okay, so this is a different player. He was on the Jaguars. I, I got the guys mixed up, but he would, um, what he would do is he would drink a smoothie shake to increase weight, and I was thinking the loser has to drink this uh, type of shake, which in this in this shake, you have, to, you have to have a shake with seven eggs, grits, cottage cheese, peanut butter, a banana, and a Gatorade all combined. So the loser of this bet has to drink that. Done. He did that I guess five you're not as big of a bagak as I thought. Like you did that five um, days Okay, game can we can we move on now? Can we move on now? Because I want to talk about from a team building perspective why taking Bijan, even though it's great for fantasy, not smart. Okay, so, let's hear it, kid. So we agree. If your run game was that good last year with a fifth round rookie and washed up Cordell Patterson, why would you take a running back well, at eighth over? I'm personally. It doesn't make sense because dude, I'm under the perspective that you should never take a running back in the first round. Honestly, I don't think you should ever you take can, a running back. You can't take a running so, back dude. in the first in the I first round. I just don't love it because I think there's team, always such good value in the second, third, fourth, fifth. There like, is, but teams it every year. If your team is at a point where it's a luxury and you're loaded everywhere else, and like that running back can just add a whole new element to your offense. But that running back has to be multidimensional. They have to be a pass catcher as well, in yeah. my opinion. Know, they can be used as a receiver. Then, okay, I understand it. But in the Falcons' case, when you were bottom three in pass defense a year ago and dead last in pressure rate with the second fewest sacks, I don't think you're a team that hey, takes Jaylen a running Carter's back. Hey, Jalen Carter's still on the board. I don't care what his issues are. I mean, 
You would have been a better pick than Bijan there. You I, yeah, I would have taken Jalen Carter as well. Um, <laughs> but Falcons are clowns, man. Still, Pitts is back. Drake London was good as a rookie. He had 2.09 yards per route run, which was 16th in the league. That's pretty good. Pitts is back. He was still 6th in tight ends in yards per route run. With Arthur Smith's scheme, can they open up the passing game a bit? You invested top ten picks in Pitts and Drake London. Can no, you can you open up can you open up the passing game a little more? They have a solid offensive line. I actually really like their offensive line, so um, they're going to be able to run the ball effectively. But I'd like to see Ritter excel in play action, working off of that. You have the weapons, right? The offense I has honestly, the weapons. I just don't can Ritter think... be that guy? They were two and two with him last year. He can't be much worse than Mariota, man. Mariota's terrible. I mean, that, that is true. I'll agree with you on that. And I they just have an easier schedule. I, do, I just don't and believe in him defense. at all. I don't believe in him and at they all. I think this defense. team is going to struggle a lot. I still think their defense is very uh, not good. Even if even with them improving, dude, they really didn't address. The, I don't think the pressure rate's going to change that much. I mean, Calais Campbell, they got. What is he, like 35, 36? I mean, he's just shell of what he used to be. Dud De- Bud De- Dud Dupree. <laughs> Bud Dupree's best days are definitely... That's what I'm saying, too. They got two Lorenzo veterans. Lorenzo Carter's not good either. He's that's what I'm saying. All the moves they percentage. did were veterans that are on the decline. So it's like, I don't think that's going to change that much. And I think their defense is going to get torched. And I don't think Desmond Ritter has has the wherewithal to go and like keep them in these high-scoring games. And with Arthur Smith's system, he wants to run the ball. But you can't really run the ball when you're trailing. Well, when it comes down to the fourth quarter, and you're down two touchdowns. You're acting like they get blown out, dude. They, they, I'm they expecting them to get blown out. Well, last year they didn't get blown out. They literally the only teams that didn't get blown out more were the Chiefs and the Bills. So they play, they stay in games, and that was with Algier. Now, and that was with Mariota being the second most inaccurate quarterback in the league with a 17.7 percent. Hey, don't talk about Mariota. You know who the only quarterback in the league who was worse? Zach Wilson. Dude. He was awful. Ritter cannot be worse. He was actually not great when he stepped in last year, but at least he took some lumps and had something to learn from. And they went 2-2 two and two in his starts. He wasn't great, but he was better than that. And they won seven games last year. Now they have the second easiest strength of schedule. Yes, I would have liked him to invest that top 10 pick somewhere else. Ideally, like you said, Jalen Carter would have been better for this team long term. But... I don't know. I still like I mean, also, the fact, I mean, Akuda already got hurt. They just went out and got Akuda. He's hurt. He is hurt, but it won't be that bad. I mean, A.J. Um, Terrell is obviously very underrated. I mean, and obviously he wasn't oh, as good last no. year, but he's Terrell still... wasn't good last year. Terrell was a stud in 2021. Last year he was 62nd among outside corners and adjusted yards allowed for covered snap. But he that's what I'm took, saying, dude. Their defense is so back. bad. You break down all the stats and you look he at it took, all. Their defense is so bad. But their old. defense is better than it was last year because they added Jesse Bates and they added David Onyemeta and they added Calais Campbell. I and Grady Jarrett's so, back. Their defense is think, better than last year. They have an easier schedule than last year, and they still went seven and ten. So what are you saying this their year? Defense still, their defense is still dude, by no stretch of I'm telling you they're going to have still a not rough even good. year, dude. They're going to have a rough year. I'm sorry, I'm not buying into any of this. I, I mean, think they're going to way over I haven't heard you give me any stats. I've given you a ton of stats to back it up. All you say is, "Oh, I don't know if Ritter is the guy." That's all you've done. I mean, there's nothing to prove it. What what stats are there out there to prove that he is the guy? But I just gave you stats that said. He can't be much oh, worse said, than Mariota. That's not a stat saying he's... Oh, he can't be much worse than Mariota. That's not a he stat. He was better than Mariota when he played. In a Mariota small was the second most size. inaccurate in quarterback. In a small sample size. He was the second size, most dude. inaccurate quarterback in the league. Only your boy when Zach Wilson was when worse. When you're comparing him to Zach Wilson and Marcus Mariota, dude, like, that's not saying anything. I'm so, oh, my God, dude. <laughs> I'm saying it's uh, easier schedule, oh, better defense, oh, at Bijan, at probably oh, better quarterback play, because when you run the ball, oh, well, don't worry, you do play action. Oh, off don't worry. You got Pitts back. Their 31st in pressure rate, they definitely adjusted by going out and getting some washed-up veterans, dude. We'll, it's, I mean, Bud Dupree, Clayus Campbell's better than what they had last year. I'll say that. And then Brady I guess you're Jerry banking on AJ. I guess you're banking on AJ Terrell and and taking well, you a think step AJ back. Terrell would rebound. And you're hoping Akuda comes back I to what rebounds. form and lives up to what he was. I mean, uh, I don't know. We'll see what happens, man. It's definitely gonna be. It's one of us is gonna be. You're talking about Jesse Bates that back end, bro. That's a great signing. You talk about Jesse Bates. That's my deep way for them. Jesse Bates changes that back end of that defense. He's mm-hmm. a vet. He's been places. He's been to a Super Bowl. Like the guy's a stud. I think he's gonna help that young secondary come together. My MVP is Bijan. Bijan's going to be the MVP of this team. I wouldn't be surprised if he runs for Mine's 1,300 out yards, for maybe even 1,500. I don't think he's going to run for that much, dude. Yeah. I'm I think I think you're just a little biased because you got Bijan in fantasy and you're no, giddy with uh, the schoolgirls. No, so you think because I've been watching Bijan Robinson at Texas for three years and you even know who he was until four months ago. 
That is not true at all, dude. I've known, I've known the best running back prospects since Saquon Barkley. Are you kidding me? And second off, dude, I think you're just getting a little giddy. I think you're going to be shocked at how much involved Algier is. Like, I don't know how he's going to go for 1,500 yards when they're going to stall Algier very much involved. I think Algier still gets 150 carries in this offense. Oh, my God. Dude, you said all the metrics. You think they're just going to be like... You're out. You had a great season. You were super efficient. You're out. The only way he gets more than 10 carries in games is if Bijan's hurt. We'll see. Bijan is a stud. And Algier adds nothing in the passing game when Bijan is a very capable receiver. Yeah, I'm just saying 150 carries. Algier I'm not saying nothing out of the I'm not, I didn't though. say he was going to come in as a receiving back. I agree with you. Bijan's a great receiver. I mean, we've already seen the camp highlights of him making insane catches. Yeah, but any, any running back can toast a linebacker in camp. I'm not putting too much stock in that, but... Who's your X Factor? Clearly, I have Ritter. I think it's obvious. Maybe you disagree. I think it's Ritter. This team goes where Ritter goes. Um, Even though I think they can win a lot of games with him being pretty average. I would say their X Factor might have to be Kyle Pitts. I mean, Pitt, that's a on. good one. That's He's a good in year one. three now. My boy Kyle Pitts, I know, no I know tight end prospects, maybe ever. Like... Yeah, exactly. You're saying he's the best tight end prospect, and I think he's got to be the X Factor for this team to really roll. I mean, when you're taking a tight end that early, that early, I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. His rookie year wasn't bad. He's more of a receiver. I don't care. I, it doesn't matter. Like, when you take someone that early, they got to be more productive than he's done. I mean, if he was a second, third rounder putting up those numbers, that's great. But he where he was. He yards as a rookie. And what did he do last year? He got hurt in week 10. But you're right. His stats did go he's down. Still, his stats I don't care. A thousand yards as a rookie really isn't that impressive for a guy that you're saying is a wide receiver. For a tight end, it is. How many, how many receiving touchdowns? That's Dude, the problem. For, a tight end, for a tight end, for a you literally just said he was a wide receiver. We, he's, Kyle big, Pitts, he's a hybrid. He might he lie, he's a hybrid, hybrid, yeah. But dude, I, uh, the stats the stats are lacking for where he was drafted. I'm comparing the stats to the capital. I will say, yeah, if you get picked fourth. The problem That's is. That's my whole thing. If he was like a late first rounder, I'd have no problem with those numbers. It's just to me, when you're taking someone that high, they got to be making him, a bigger. It's the offensive scheme. Like he was targeted on 28.5% of his I mean, routes. Yeah, granted, he, I know tenets, he wasn't granted by hundred or more. Or he wasn't routes. drafted by uh, Arthur Smith back. and hit that scheme. Yes, but. that's the problem. They, they, they right, want to run the ball. A ton. Anyway, he's my X factor. All of his targets are like ten plus more yards downfield. He's still so my X factor he's because getting, I think he can a lot. Of, can I finish? God damn it! He's not getting a lot of under <laughs> underneath targets. <laughs> he doesn't get like for PPR. He's not getting a lot of those looks in the middle of the field and underneath. Like, they keep running play action and having him run deep down the field. So, if you don't have a very accurate quarterback, yeah, no shit, Mariota's not getting the ball downfield. So, I'd like to see a bounce back. I like the X factor, though. If he steps up, it could change his offense. Yeah. Who has your, as your uh, defensive player of the year for this team? Um, it's tough to say because I'm not in love with anyone really on this defense. I mean... I know Bates is a huge ad. I'm not really sold on any of the other veterans they brought in. Uh, I think it's Bates or Terrell. I mean, that's a yeah, good Yeah, I would Terrell. say probably Terrell, 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 banking on the fact that he goes back to his form from 2021. Um, I know Falcon fans like to hype him up like he's the best corner in the league, and they try to, every every time I see a post about, like, Saucer or Tan, they're like, where's A.J. Terrell? And they try to act like he's one of those guys. But if he can truly get back to the form he was at, I think he could be the MVP of this defense. Okay. Let's move on to New Orleans. Yeah. Another bis- disagreement here. Oh, I'm high on these guys. I am very high on Nine these guys. Nine and a half win total. Are you taking the over? I'm smashing the over. 11 and 6, baby. Blech. Blech. I have them at 7 and 10. I actually love the under, and I'm going to place it right after this. Wow. That's interesting. <clears throat> they started 4 9 last Quite year. Interesting. You they beat the Falcons. You with, think Ray can put his money where his mouth is on this one? Oh, yeah. You want to do a bet? Let's do the same thing. Shake on this one. That disgusting shake. Let's do the bet again. <laughs> what? Two for Double shake, baby. Double shake. Double shake. You're going to have to do a double no, shake. No, no, no. For this one, the first one, for this one I say, one. For this one, I think he <laughs> might like it. Reagan's a little gross. I, I'd say for this one, we do the, the Will Levis mayonnaise and a cup of coffee. Oh, <laughs> oh okay. Yeah, let's push it up. <laughs> That's fair. I like that, too. That's smart. Come on, Bagot. Shake my hand. I, my hand's out. I'm waiting for you. <laughs> oh, you got some sweaty palms. He's nervous, guys. It's not where it's it's hot in this in this uh, garage right now. All right, you tell me why the Saints are winning ten games. Well, first off, I mean when you go out and get a guy like Derek Carr, I don't care what people say. I think Derek Carr's elite. I I mean we've seen him play at an MVP <laughs> level before. <laughs> Elite. You say Derek Carr's elite? I do think Derek Carr's oh, very man. elite, dude. Tell me you don't watch ball without telling me you don't watch dude, ball. Dude, I well, I don't really know if that means I don't watch ball. I think most people that don't watch ball would say he sucks and be like, oh, well, the Raiders sucked last year. He sucks. 
I think last year was a was, kind of left a bad taste in everyone's mouth, and I think that team was just kind of a shit show with Josh McDaniels. There's a reason why they let go of pretty much everybody outside of Devontae Adams. I mean, Josh Jacobs wants out. They traded Waller. They Carr. They traded Carr. I mean, that he got out of that dumpster fire. He's in a place where he wants to be. That wants him, and I think he's going to be in a better mindset. I love their receiver core. I mean, Chris Olave. He's a stud. I mean, if it wasn't for Garrett Wilson, he would have won Rookie of the Year. I love Olave, but I don't know why you love the receiver core. What do you mean? I, I think Michael Thomas is. I think Michael Thomas is still good, dude. Oh my god, bro! He's played what? Oh uh, yeah. Ten games in fucking three years. Yeah. You can talk about Michael Thomas right now. The guy's just never healthy. Like you can't say I love Chris Olave. Right, fine, I think I he's gonna be a true number fine, one. Fine, I won't talk week. about him. But it, no matter what, I still love Chris Olave. Like. <laughs> like I, I mean, if I still think Michael Thomas is good, like yeah, I can't bank on the fact that he's going to be healthy. But if he does stay healthy, like when you decided to talk about Darren Waller and Lamar Jackson, who haven't been able to stay healthy the past years, but they've oh, been healthier than this. Oh, guy. but because it doesn't, because it's me now saying a guy who can't stay healthy. At, well, he hasn't been able to stay healthy. So he's you can't played bring him ten up. games in three seasons. Okay, and he's now thirty years old. All right. I mean, if you're banking on Michael Thomas, I mean, I will say that's... that's I mean, Michael Thomas isn't their number one, is he? Chris Olave is. Yeah, Chris Olave is legit. They, and they have a good staple of running backs right now, even with Kamara missing the first three games. I mean, Jamal Williams led the league in rushing touchdowns last year. Let that sit. Let that be food for thought. Don't yeah. forget about Jimmy Mr. Graham. Line himself. Yeah, G- like Joe just said, they got Jimmy Grandpa back. Jimmy Graham. All right, but now in all reality, I mean, Jawan Johnson was had a great year last he, year. Yeah, he was respectable. I mean, he had 40, seven, seven touchdowns catches, last year. Forty-two catches, five hundred eight yards, seven touchdowns. That was a good leap. For I him mean, their old line's solid. Uh, I I don't know. I mean, they're a, they're they're average, but they're also getting older. Yeah, they were sixteenth in ESPN's pass block win rate, twentieth in run block win rate a year ago, twenty-sixth uh, in Pro Football Focus's run blocking and pass blocking grades. And no honestly, significant addition to the unit. Um, Andres Pete, their one guard, is one of the worst in football. He just turned 30 years old. He's missed 17 games the past two years. He was 71st amongst all guards last year and 73rd the year prior, according to Pro Football Focus. He's terrible. I like Ramchek. He's good. He's been a staple for a long time. Um, Penning, who they took. He's a more in the run game. He's kicking out to left tackle, so the upside's it's there. It's crazy because he came in as a quarterback, too. <laughs> Yeah, it's a, it's a, I don't know. It's, and it's on top a, of that, they went out and got another running back, Kendra Miller, who's supposed to be a stud. I mean, Kendra Miller was very was good at TCU. He's recovering from a knee. Honestly, I, I wouldn't be surprised if after this season, yeah. it's Miller's backfield. Probably, yeah. I mean, Kamara's he has tools clearly to be been down declining. Back. Kamara's on the decline. And if they go out and get Kareem Hunt, I mean, they're going to have a lot of running back, or a lot of weapons out of that backfield. Can I talk about Kamara real quick? Um, sure. Last year was his worst in expected points added per attempt. His second worst in yards per carry, yards after contact, and yards before contact. He was 30th in success rate, 31st in yards per carry out of 42 backs. Problem is there were a lot of heavy boxes on him, but like yep. the past few seasons, it's been a four-year stretch where every single year his efficiency numbers and stats and everything you want from running back have continued to decline. I will so. say that is a big Drew Brees effect, though, because going from Drew Brees to Jameis Winston and Andy Dalton it yeah. definitely has to factor into that. Obviously, age does, too, but I think getting yeah. Derek, Derek Carr is probably going to be the best quarterback he's had since Drew Brees, so I do think that'll help him. And also, he, he's dealt with injuries the past couple of years, too. I mean, none, none significant, but he still has been yeah, dealing with injuries. Yeah, he's had lingering injuries. So, my thing is, I think the fact that it's not going to be him being the only guy, because last year he was the only guy, and, I mean, when that offense has Michael Thomas, who can't stay healthy, Alave, I had, I did what Alave miss a game or two with a concussion, and you got Andy Dalton, who's kind of, at this point, a backup. It's going to be tough, and like you said, they were stacking the boxes. So I think with the fact that he's not going to have to be the main guy and can have Jamal Williams taking some of the workload, Kendra Miller rotating, and, and I think we even see some packages with him and Kendra Miller on the field because Kamara can play in the slot. I mean, he's... One of the best receiving backs. He's a better receiver than he is rusher. Yeah, and that's what he came into the league as. I mean, for a while, Mark Ingram was the bruiser between the numbers, and, and Ingr- uh, Kamara was that receiving back. So I, st- I think he's going to have a good year, and his numbers will go up from last year. I mean, less less touches, but I think his efficiency will be a lot better, just just with the Derek Carr effect. Yeah, I know you think Derek Carr is like an elite quarterback, but he actually was accurate at the 44th highest rate out of 47 quarterbacks. With last like year. 10 plus Dude, yards down. I'm throwing last year he completely out the window. I'm just saying, I'm throwing last year completely out the window. He I think that was a dumpster inaccurate. fire. I think he did not want to be there. 60% uh, All the reports were saying rate, he didn't want to be there. The fans wanted him rate. out. The fans were saying shit to his wife. 
He wanted out. That was a shit show last year. I love Derek and Carr. Like, I think he's a gamer, but like I think we know what he is, and I think his best years are behind him. I don't think he's getting any better. I mean, maybe they're behind him, but I think he's going to be significantly better than last year. I'm throwing last year completely out the window. New coach, a system where you got, got – like, look, they threw everybody out. I mean, they're not paying Josh Jacobs, a guy they fed the ball a ton last year. Darren Waller, they got rid of. They got rid of Carr. I, I just, I'm throwing it out the window. I think Josh McDaniels in the system is terrible, and I don't think he's a good coach. And I, I'm honestly throwing it out the window, and I think – going to see more of like when he was there with uh, Gruden and, and when he was had more success and they were fighting for playoff berths. I mean, okay. they were in the playoffs two years ago before before they fired Gruden midseason and uh, who took over? Is it Basaccio was? Yeah. Yeah. Basaccio, yeah. Um, that was a they, fluke they were, of the year though. They were like Why is that a fluke of the year? I don't even know if that's in this they were ins- I knew their under was going to hit last year because they were like insanely good at one score games. The record was like 7-2 and two or something. I mean, you could say it's a fluke of a year, but I mean, it's hard to call it a fluke when you're winning games with an intern head coach. I mean... Yeah, it's fluky, but at the same time, it's impressive. I mean, for a guy to take over midseason and still get into the playoffs with everything that team went through, because not only losing Gruden, but the whole rug situation too. So yeah, that was a, that was a shit show of a year. For sure. That's what I'm saying. So he's dealt with two shit shows of a year the past two years. Right. So. I, I I think there's I been a lot you. of I think he's a good leader. I think he's a gamer. I just don't think he's going to be very good in this offense. I, I don't love if Olave gets hurt. I mean, Michael if, Thomas if, probably gets hurt. If there's, if. Just, there's no depth, if there's that's no depth point. of the receiver position. I mean, you can make that case for a lot of teams, so and especially in this division. Well, this team is one of the no, worst in the, in the de- with. Dude, you depth. can make a case for every team in this division that if their number one receiver gets hurt, the depth's not great. Okay. I'm just saying it's a shit point. It's not a shit point. They have very poor depth at this room. I mean, who's their wide receiver three, Reagan? Can you even tell me? Rashid. Yeah. I think he's going to have Shaheed. a big year. Because it's on the, the notes that I wrote. Okay. Well. <laughs> I mean, they still they still got tight end depth too. I like. All right, they still got Jawan Johnson. They got like Foster Johnson. Moreau. All right, let's once he talk, recovers from let's cancer. Let's talk defense. Let's talk defense. So, uh, this defense, Cam Jordan, beast. Uh, they were Mario Davis, beast. Their defensive line was last in ESPN's pass rush win rate a season ago. Twenty fifth in run stop win rate. They had forty eight sacks with a below average thirty point six pressure rate. They lost players. They didn't add anyone significant besides the two rookies that they drafted who both I'm a little hesitant about. Brian Brzee from Clemson, former five-star recruit, never fully developed, similar to Miles Murphy. He got hurt a lot. He was fourth in the ACC in pressure rate generated from the interior, 12.1% last year. So the tools are there. Former five-star recruit, they're banking on him because they lost guys. They didn't really bring anyone in significantly. And Isaiah Foskey, who they got in second round from Notre Dame, he had high numbers if you look him up, but most of his – Production was against bad teams. He was actually terrible against top 50 offensive lines in terms of pressures allowed. So I don't know if those two guys are going to step in and make a big impact as rookies. I don't like this front. Demario Davis is very good. He's still a stud. Oh, yeah. I mean, he was an all-pro. Yeah. He was an all-pro. Still a top linebacker in this And their secondary is good. Secondary is good. Yeah. Like, that, I still have high hopes for this team half because I like their defense a lot. Like, yeah, maybe their front seven's not the best, but their secondary is gross. You can't take that away from them. I mean, Marcus May, Tyron Matthew, Bradley Roby, and Marshawn Lattimore. I mean, right there and then, that's a freaking nice secondary. And, and then having a stud linebacker you can make a case for is the best linebacker in football right now. Um, yeah, but their yeah. second corner, Paul Sinati Bo, is terrible out of Stanford. Um, he was yeah, but I think they can hide that still. 78th out of 87 outside corners and yards allowed per coverage snap. I don't think you, I mean he's one. Of, he's just starting outside corner, and Bradley Roby in the slot is average at best. Lattimore, when he plays his best football, he's elite. But like we've seen that he goes on stretches where he's dominant, and then he gets lit up a little bit. Um, famously, Mike Evans torches him, but I don't know. You're right, the safety tandem's really nice. It's good. This is a good secondary. I'm not, you know, just nitpicking a little bit. It's a great secondary. I think that's the strength of their team, to be honest with you. And then I didn't even see that. Got Nathan Shepard. He was a beast on the Jets, especially against the Yeah, Lions, he was so. second amongst defensive tackles in run-stop win rate. They lost David Onyemeta and Shai Toto, who we've talked about, both those guys. Yeah, um, to the other division, mate. And they've lost Marcus Davenport as well. Mm. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm I'm pretty high on this team. I mean, I'm I'm banking on Carr kind of getting back to his form. I think he's the MVP. I think he's the X factor of the team, and I think he, this team goes as far as Derek Carr does. If he comes back and shows kind of the form he's had earlier in his career, I think they have a good chance to go far. I mean, at least in terms of winning the division, I'm sure they'll get smacked in the playoffs once they make it. Um, but I, I think, like once again, I said, like I said before, it's just uh, a lot of bad situation he's been putting in the past couple of years with the Raiders, and I think now that he's in a better situation with no distractions, he has no excuses. 
My MVP is Chris Olave. I think he is the catalyst of this offense. If he goes down, this offense is screwed. X Factor, though, I have Michael Thomas, because if he can stay healthy, because he was pretty good last year before he got hurt in three games. I believe he had like 170 yards and three touchdowns in three games. So does he still have it left in the tank? I don't know. Can he stay healthy? I don't know. But if he is healthy, that's a pretty good one-two punch. And then yeah. I, yeah, so I will say that. Rookie of the year, I think, will be Brian Brzee. I just think he is the quickest path to getting snaps. Um, honestly, I don't love this rookie class, so Kendra Miller, like, not this year, but in the future could be a great pick, and the third round could be a great value pick. I mean, hey, you never know. Kendra Miller could be the rookie of the year for this team. I mean, if Kamara, it, it, I mean, if he could win the job in the three weeks. I mean, if he comes back and is able to play in those three weeks, it's just him and Jamal Williams. So. It's just a little, but he's recovering. Uh, he's not going to win the job because he's recover, still recovering from knee surgery. That's why they were working on Hunt. If he was healthy, I doubt they'd yeah. bring in Hunt. Yeah. But if he was fully healthy, then... I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he beat out Jamal Williams for the lead back for those three weeks, but... Oh, uh, yeah. I don't we'll know. see. I mean, all right, so there you have it. I'm big on the Saints. You're big on the Falcons. One of us will be right, one of us will be wrong, or maybe we'll both be wrong. Um, um, yeah. Time will tell, huh? Before we move on, I actually want to drop a stat in for Olave, because I love Olave for fantasy. I think he's a stud. His 2.43 yards per route run was fifth amongst all rookie wide receivers over the last decade with 300 routes ran. The only guys who were better in routes ran and how many yards they generated over that time were Odell Beckham Jr., A.J. Brown, Justin Jefferson, and Jamar Chase. So that's a very impressive rookie season. Yeah. Especially with the quarterback play that he had, Dalton and Winston. Winston. So I think Olave you should certainly target, especially in Dynasty. I think he's a stud. Yep. All right, that kind of wraps up what I got to say. Yeah, um, I'm, good. I'm good. I think we can go to trivia next. I'm just going to cut to this quick break, and we'll be back to you guys with some trivia. What the hell are you guys doing? We've been telling you guys to subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on SoundCloud, follow us on Spotify, follow us on TikTok, all those apps. Come on, guys. Just take a minute. Pause the video. Make sure you're following us on all these platforms. Come on. Hey, guys. Four, division, or four teams are done. You know what time that is. What time is it? Trivia time. Trivia time. My favorite part of the show. So we got uh, Freddie Benson over there on the camera. He's going to ask us the questions. Wait, before we start, I just want to clear up. We are allowed to steal, Jake. Right? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, as you guys know, we had some uh, smart, really smart, handsome, funny guy come on and <laughs> ask us trivia questions. <laughs> and uh, he was like, the best smartest part about guy it was, I'm enough. talking to him, and he was like, yeah, like, your brother was so bad at asking us trivia questions, like, he's so bad, I'll do ten times better, like, I'll become your trivia guy. Dude comes on in his, like, weird crop top with his glitter on his arms from his costume from the night before, whatever that weird I was doing, but he comes on, and he forgets that we're allowed to steal on the questions, and just never factors that in, and then finally, after throwing, lets me steal. <laughs> finally, yeah. after throwing Colin giant question, yeah, but I will giant ask. question, I will that ask. oh yeah, I mean it's pretty easy to ask a fan will, of a it's team. It's one one in trivia. I yeah, oh yeah, you whooped my ass. Yeah, I mean fucking if I was getting fed Jets questions, I think I'd whoop that ass too. But you know, whatever. Yeah, I digress. We, we'll get we'll get <laughs> we'll get to that division. All right, Joe. First question: Who's starting off? So since we're talking about Jake, he actually sent us in a question. Oh, thanks, Jake. Oh, wow. So, Super smart. Who is this question for? Super smart, funny, and Who handsome, Who won last Jake. time? I won. Colin won last time. All right, time. so you so can I'll, pick. I'll go first. I'll go first. That you okay. will. Okay. What year did the Atlanta Falcons make their first Super Bowl appearance? Uh, what the fuck, Jake? What kind of <laughs> question is that? <laughs> I know it. I know it. You don't know that? You know that? Yeah. Um, 2018? You know that? Dude, they made they lost in the Super Bowl prior to going. You know that. When? 1989. I don't know. Close. What is it? 1998. Oh, I, uh, I'm dyslexic, I guess. <laughs> they lost to the Denver Broncos 34-19. I did know they made a Super Bowl uh, prior to Jake, that. Jake made the question hard. Of course, he did that. Mr. Super Bowl trivia over there. All right, okay. He, he got payback for giving me all the layups last week. Yeah. I got, I got another tough one for you. To... Who's this one from? Um, this is not from anyone. This one is... I think it might be from Chirf because it was, it's a Panthers question. So. Oh, cool. Thanks, Matt Chirf. Um, name every week one starter for the Panthers uh, at quarterback since 2010. Week one. So. Does it say how many there are? Yeah, I'll tell you how many there are. There's six names. Six names. Okay. That's difficult, man. All right, yeah. so uh, That's tough. Baker's one. Cam Newton's. Okay. Are you not doing it in order? Oh, I mean, I, no. Yeah, yeah, it's just just rattle right, off. Right, right. Baker, Cam okay. Newton, uh, 
Jake Del Home. I, I butchered his name. Delome. Delome. Jake Delome. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, oh no, he wasn't one. Jake Delome. I'm not gonna say anything. Okay. Yeah, you gotta wait till you get um, six. Sam Darnold. Mm-hmm. Um. Fuck, man, it's been a while. You're missing a big one. I, I mean, this I is from 2010. I said Cam oh. Newton already. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I said Newton, Mayfield, Delhomme, Darnold. Uh, Bryce Young obviously doesn't count yet. No. Um, bro, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I'll just. Is there a big one? Is there an obvious one? Or are these kind of tough? Uh, like, there was one guy who played for, like, one year. All right, so I, let me go down the list because. I mean, one, unless I'm not stealing, bro. All right, you're not stealing? Okay. So, in 2010, it was Jimmy Clausen. Jimmy oh, Clausen! Yeah. Oh, former Notre Dame quarterback. For eight seasons, Cam Newton was the starter. And then yeah. in 2019, Kyle Allen. So oh, I that's never, right. Yeah. I was never going to get Kyle Allen. And then Teddy Bridgewater in 2020. Oh, we should have got Bridgewater. Yeah, we so got that Bridgewater. was the one I thought. Oh, so Tim Darnold, Darnold never started. No, Darnold did. 2021, he started week one. This is all just week one. And then Baker started week one. Oh, so Jake, De- Jake DeLone. No, Jake DeLone wasn't, wasn't. I guess, no. yeah, I thought he played. Oh, yeah, it was week one. So how many did he you must have stopped three of the six? I got three of the six. Yeah, all right, three. we'll give you half a point. No, nah, no half a point. Yeah, I didn't no get point, it. No points. I didn't, no point. No point. All right. I don't all want right. no Lamicky dub. Yo, I respect that. Game respect game, bro. If you respected that, you wouldn't let Jake give you curve Giants questions last time. I, I like, didn't decide. You would have grabbed him and be like, yo, Jake, give me some tough shit. Yeah, <laughs> you should have been on that. <laughs> all right. All right. So hopefully, it's going to get a little easier. They get harder. We're screwed. All right. Who is the NFC South all time rushing leader? Um. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um. Hmm. When you hear it, you're gonna be like, "Oh fuck! Like I should have got that." I know. If you get it, you looking it up? No. He's looking it up. I'm not looking it up. Oh man. Do you know it? I have an idea. <sighs> Dude, I'm gonna have to pass. I don't know. I am going to take a guess on Devontae Freeman. No. Mark Ingram. <laughs> is it no. Michael Turner? There's actually no one on either one of those teams. He's on the Panthers. Oh, 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 uh, Williams. D'Angelo Williams? That's number two. He had 6,846. Cam Newton? No, no, no. Oh, D'Angelo oh. Williams. The person first has 700... Yeah, I don't know. It's Jonathan Stork. Jonathan oh, Stewart. bro, I didn't realize he had Former New York Giant him. legend. Yeah. I was thinking him. I thought about it. He was one of the Jonathan names that I went through Stewart. in my head. I think Stewart. But I was like, there's no way he... I was had. looking... I was trying to think of guys like... Older, yeah. yeah I thought older, it would be yeah. more than 7,000. That's yeah. so low. Jonathan Because he, he split. He split yeah. with... Um, that, who came up with Williams, that question? Williams was two, and I believe number three was Warren Dunn. Who came up uh, with that question? Warren Dunn for the Saints. What? Who came up with that question? Um, I don't believe I got a name for that one either. Put All your right, name so in so we can give you credit. Yeah. The uh, guys that put these in are absolutely kicking I, your ass right now. Yeah. So. All right, so I, this one is a tough one. Actually, I don't know. Another tough one. All right. <laughs> this division's hard. Bro. All right, ready? Yeah. Who missed the tackle in the Minnesota Miracle? Oh, oh. Wasn't it, uh... Oh. I'll just go with Lattimore. No, it was a safety. It's a safety. It's a safety. Is he still on team? Oh, we didn't know who it is now, but I can't steal. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. I already know who it is. Oh, I guess. I won't get a point, but I'm going to say it once. Marcus Williams? Yes. Let's go! Oh, Let's wow. go! Oh, I, I thought it was Gardner Johnson. No, wow. I knew it wasn't Gardner Johnson. I knew, I was like, I think he's gone now. I think he, yeah, Marcus Williams on Baltimore. Ah, Let's go. Uh, That's a big one, dude. Because I, I stole yours. I stole yours. Let's right, go. Give me, give me an easy one. Colin. Okay. Um, who is the longest tenured saint? This is a question from Kyle Curley from North Carolina. So shout out to him. So shout out to the North Carolina boy. The longest tenured saint on the team. Yeah. yeah. Currently. It's got to be Cameron Jordan. Yeah, 192 games. That was an easy question. Yeah. <laughs> that was easy. I mean, we just talked yeah. about how he's still old yeah, and still yeah, doing yeah. it, you know? Yeah, I don't know. All right, Listen, do not this was Kyle. That was Kyle Curry. This is an ass beating, bro. You either get up or you're going to stay down. You, you know, always get the now? easy questions, bro. I, what do you mean? I'll I'll just stole your question. I'll give, you, I'll give you one you should get. 
Who was the player to catch the pass that made Drew Brees the all-time leading passer? And who is this from? Uh, I don't know. Uh, Michael Thomas. Oh, fuck me. Uh, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Graham. No. Alvin Kamara. No. Marcus Colston. All right, we're no. done. We're done. It was Traquan Smith. Oh, <laughs> yo, you should know this one. It's well, I remember, I remember that. It was like a Monday well, night game. That's that what like threw me off because yeah, you were like, oh, that you should it's know like, this. Yeah. It seemed yeah. obvious. I yeah, know yeah, that's that's why. Why. Well, like, I just remember that moment. Right. That's why I, I would have thought more out of the box. But as soon as you easy, I'm like, oh, it's got to be Michael Thomas. Okay. Because I knew Marcus Colston, I knew it wasn't. Colston, since you've got a lead, I'm going to give you one of the tougher ones. This is Well, there's only like, what, two left? I've got I've got like a few left. Okay. Because this is your fourth year asking being asked. Yeah, this is my yeah. Fourth. So that means there's four questions fourth. left. All right. What two cousins played quarterback for the Falcons and Saints in the mid 2000s? Ooh. Shout out to Luke Martirano from Florida. Oh, that's uh, a good question. That's a good question, yeah. Luke. That's really a good, good question. question. <sighs> Dude, I don't think I'm gonna get this. That's tough. The teams were the Falcons and the Saints. If that uh, help Falcons you at all. and the Saints. In the when the mid two thousands or like early early 2000s. yeah this is before early, Vic early two thousands before Vic two thousand one two thousand six was the guy that played on the Falcons and two thousand two thousand five was the guy who played on the Saints. Do you know it? No. <laughs> I, don't, I mean, I I gotta think. <laughs> no, yeah, it's a tough question. Jesus. You you will know one of the quarterbacks. I'm I'll be surprised if you know the guy. That's on the other team. <clears throat> I'm going to have to pass. Oh, I'm going to pass, too. <laughs> okay, so it was Michael Vick and Aaron Brooks. Oh, I thought it was pre-Michael Vick. No, no. I, I figured once you said 2001 and 2006, was, it was Vick. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because yeah, Vick was... But like it wouldn't have mattered, because yeah. I couldn't... I, I would have never got the other guy. Five. Yeah, you said it. Okay. okay. I was thinking... I was trying to think yeah, pre-Vick. Never going to get the other guy. I was thinking pre-Vick and pre, pre-Breeze, obviously. Like, I don't even... Yeah. All, All right. right. Struggling. I got two. You guys. These zero. are some good questions, okay. though. So these far, these are really good. Which team has the most division titles? See these ones, okay. You know. Yeah. I um, like these. Yeah. <laughs> I want to give Reagan a, like a layup right here, if he could get one right. Uh, I'll go with the Saints. Okay. Yeah, that's correct. All right. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that makes, makes the most sense. Yeah. Panthers were it's, next at five. The Panthers were next at five. Yeah. How many do the Saints have? Seven. Oh. Oh yeah, yeah that's true. So they, you got one, one more question each. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is you're up two one. This is the dagger. You're up two one. This is the dagger. Come Unless on. he makes okay. the next one worth two. Which for me. NFC South team had the best defense? Best defense in terms of points allowed in a single season. Like all time. You have to name the year too, or no? Or it doesn't say what year. I'll tell you. Um. Yeah, I could tell well, you. If it, well, if you give me the year, if it's re if it's recent, it gives it away. No, it's not recent. It's not recent. Don't give him the yeah. year. If he just has to say what team it is. Okay. Yeah. So the best scoring defense of season. Yeah. All right. They allowed a hundred and ninety six points in sixteen regular season. Oh, games. I know which team it is. I'm gonna go with the Falcons. It's not. <sighs> I'm gonna go with the Bounty Gate Saints. Nope. Okay, 2002 the year, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Oh, that's with Booger McFarlane. That's, oh my God, that was, oh, was that was when Gruden was the coach. Was that is actually years. so obvious. Bobby Kiffin was the defensive coordinator. And that's when Gruden was the head coach, and that was with Booger McFarlane. Oh yep. my God, that was so obvious. Damn it. That actually right. is so obvious. Well, if you if you get this right, we have to go yeah. to sudden death. Fuck question. me, that's so obvious. Mm -hmm. Do we have another question or no? Yeah, I got another. Okay, so we're to sudden death. All right, this one is also from uh, Hafe Legend. Let's go, Hafe. He asked, what NFC South team had both offensive and defensive rookies of the year? And he said, besides his New York Jets. Hey, I season. like that. Um, <laughs> that would be the Saints with Marshawn Lattimore and Michael Thomas. You got the other guy wrong. What? Yeah. We the got... offensive guy. Oh I'm, so oh, I'm sorry. Lattimore and Kamara. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well. I guess we could count that. You got the Saints. You got so, the Saints. Yeah. That was the question, right? Oh, yeah. oh, I thought yeah. I had to name the yeah, players. That was the question. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you got it right. I mean, that was, yeah. yeah. That it was, was just a cherry was, on top. Yeah. So, yeah. It's you got a little too fancy with it's it. It's 2 2. That's a great question, Hey. Oh, shit. Okay. All right, cool. All right, tiebreaker question. All right, tiebreaker. Oh. So, that. All right. All right, and we are back with the tiebreaker. One of us is winning and getting the two one one. The That's other the one big is one. losing and getting the one That's the big two. one. A two one lead in trivia is definitely something. Yeah. No, it's gonna be sick for me when I get to it's a two one lead. Rights. That's awesome. Sunday. 
yeah, right. I mean, I'll, I can't wait to be talking shit for the next couple of days till Sunday. I cannot wait to be 2-1. Let's go. What do we got, Joe? All right. Which team in the NFC South had the most winners? Panthers. 15-1. and one. That's Panthers. That's easy. Bang! Cam Newton, motherfucker. 2-1. and one. I'll see you Sunday. I'll see you Sunday. So with that being said, we got our next episode on Sunday, Colin. You're going to be walking into that episode one and two. Hopefully you study up on your AFC South trivia, man. I'm in the hole, but we'll bounce oh, back. Oh, you are in a no major doubt. hole. A major hole at one and two. AFC South, coming Sunday. Appreciate the love and support. Send us more questions. Hit us up on the socials. Send some more trivia questions. Guys, let's get the hashtag trending. Hashtag Collins one and two in trivia. Let's get it going. All right. And with that, see you guys later. Yup. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you. Love you all. Have a good night. Have a good morning whenever you're listening to it. Sunday. Be there. <laughs>